Hello, Richard Holden here. We're live. It's like, uh, I don't know, some, sometime after 7 or something. Yeah, it's about 15 after. We're getting a little bit of late start. I had a bunch of stuff I had to do before we got on. <laughs> Sporting my new BTR swag that I got from Brian. That's the only way that I get new clothes is somebody, somebody actually sends me a shirt or something, which is awesome. So today or tonight, we're going to talk about an interesting test I did. I'm going to be doing a video on it, a full video on it. it it's it's the <laughs> oh, it's the often compared uh, 706 862 heads versus the 243s. And as you guys will remember, I did a comparisons of this long ago where we I tested the 706, which is the same as the 862, the 243, the 241, which is the LS1 head, and the 317. It ran all the stock heads. I ran them all on a 5.3 to show, because that was the most common motor that people would use. By the way, if you're thinking of getting, using one of those heads and you have a 4.8, use the smaller head, use the 706-862 head. Um, and we ran the test and the 706 head made the most power on the 5.3. It's a small bore. The head's designed for that. It has more than enough airflow to support the power level that we were testing. And then to, because everyone was screaming about it, I did another test where we compared the 706 head to the 799, we had 799, 799, 243, same head. So we compared those to the each other on a cammed six liter, a, on a combination where it made more power and needed more head flow and it could take advantage of, if anything, could take advantage of the extra head flow offered by the 243 over the, the 706 head. And, you know, not strangely enough, on the on the more powerful motor, the 243 head made a little bit more power at the top. It made about 10 or 12 more horsepower, which is a which is a fair bit. But down below 5,000 RPM, it lost power compared to the um, 706 head. And a lot of guys want to point to compression, but the difference was only like two cc's or two and a half cc's. So it's not very much of a compression change. It's more likely that it's the uh, Brian Dooley's coefficient of discharge, the smaller valve, the smaller port, you know, all of those things can contribute to making more torque, not just a change in compression. There are a couple of things going on with that comparison. And for years, I've been telling people about that, that, hey, you're on A53, you need to use this head. You need to make this work. Well, we, <laughs> we did another test um, because Brian's a, a, a huge fan of the, I'm looking for some flow data here. Um, Brian is a big fan of the 243 and 799 head, and rightfully so, because they flow very well. They work very well. They make lots of power. Everybody recommends them because it's hard to go wrong with that head. And, and especially like ported versions of that. I'm, I'm looking over here. Am I all fuzzy now? Come on. Come on, stupid camera. There we go. Um, I was looking for some flow data, but the, um, in that comparison where the 6.0 could utilize that, the smaller motor really couldn't. And the, the, the smaller head did better on the, certainly on the smaller motor and better up to 5,000 on the bigger motor. So everyone was saying, yeah, hey, you need to mill the 243 head to make it even. And I just wanted to test the stock stuff. But we redid that test because Brian, as I said, is a big fan of the 243. And all the Gen 4 stuff seems to come with that 243-799 combination, or at least a lot of them do. Certainly the L L33 and the LC9 and, and a lot of different combinations come with that other head. They just combine it with a flat top piston so that it has basically the same compression as it had with the other combination. So it, it got me thinking, well, you know, one test, just like we were talking about last night with the rod ratio or the connecting rod length thing, one test, and in that case with the rods, it was actually three, <laughs> but one test of this is not enough, and, or two tests, or how many ever tests I've, I've run this 706 versus different stock heads a number of times, but always using the same heads to do it. So it's not surprising that we would come up with the same data. So we tried the different sets of heads this time, but both heads that we got when I was back with the guys at Brian Tooley. And as I said, I'm going to be doing a complete, a full video on this. But what we did was ran, he's got a Gen 4 or 5.3. It was a VVT motor. We removed the VVT. We put a camshaft in it. It's got a Trailblazer SS, the late model intake manifold. Um, oddly enough, it had a 102 millimeter throttle body on a 90 millimeter opening. And they had to space it out a little bit to get it to open. And I don't, I don't think that that affects anything. But And and they have the their dyno headers that they run, which I think are 
I need to check and see if they're inch and three quarter or inch and seven eighths. Probably inch and seven eighths, uh, given so that they could run lots of different things on it. So we ran a set of what we did was we ran a set of 243 heads on this cammed uh, 5.3 liter, on this Gen 4 5.3 liter. We ran the 243 heads. Then we ran a set of 862 heads. Then we ran a set of big valve 862 heads. Then we ran a set of uh, the standard size valve 862 heads, but had chamber work and they were milled back down to their, their standard compression ratio. Then we did, uh, then they did the guys, Brian and Brandon from, from, <laughs> you know, total engineer flow fame did some, what I would call basic hand porting, not, not anything at all. Like, uh, you know, the stage two stuff that you would get from total engine airflow back in the day or now just more like what the average guy could do. In fact, in fact, it was interesting in talking to Brian and Brandon that they had never, uh, they couldn't ever remember porting a set of these 862 heads with stock valve sizes. Part of the upgrade on from total engine airflow back when Brian was doing it, and even now, is they put a bigger valve in it, put a bigger intake valve in it, and I think that they put a bigger exhaust valve in it too. And that obviously changes what they're doing to the porting to accommodate that valve size. And when they're done with those heads, they flow a lot. They flow over 300 CFM. So they're, we, we've used those heads a number of times and they flow very well and they make really good power. As a matter of fact, I think the very first set of ported LS heads that I ever ran were these ported 706 heads from Brian way back in the day. And they work very well, but these were not that. <laughs> but the the interesting thing about all this and only the live guys get, get kind of a, a sneak peek on this, a sneak preview of what, what happens with the video that I'm going to go into detail on. We'll give you the airflow data and the power and all that stuff. But has anybody out there in LS land ever heard of a set of 243 heads, stock ones, stock valve size, no porting. Have you ever heard any that flow over 270 CFM? Because I never have. And that's what these heads flowed. And we flowed them several times just to make sure. Now I, I do have to say, and this is the next question. Um, I, I do have to say that the uh, we did flow them on a 4125 bore fixture because that's what we had at the time. I'm going to be doing that comparison. I'm going to do a comparison coming up on cylinder heads, flowing them. We'll do a we'll flow them on like a 37800 or a 38800 bore and then we'll go up to a 3900 a 4 inch and and maybe we'll go all the way up to a 4125 to see if there's a change in airflow from the change in bore size now we know that there can be because we know that there's valve shrouding but the valve shrouding really is going to happen more in the chamber unless you continue with that bore size that that is the same as the chamber all the way down so my question is, how much do you think that um, the 243 head, how much do you think that they can in, the flow can increase if we flow it on a bigger bore fixture? Um, we've done that in the past. I just I haven't flowed hundreds of heads. I can't remember what the change was. I don't remember it being dramatic. Um, you know, I, I think it would be more dramatic if you went down to a small bore size and the chamber opening and the valve size needed a, you know, it was designed for a 4125 bore, like an LS7 style. Like if we float an LS7 head on a 3780 bore fixture, that's probably going to hurt it. But if we flow the heads on the bore fixture that they're designed to operate in and then go up from there, I don't think we see as big a gain. So it'll be interesting. I'll, I'm going to test that and we'll, I'll be able to give you that data to find out. But these 243 heads made more than the 862 heads, and I haven't had that happen in the past. And and <laughs> it's, it's almost like they continued to do that no matter what we did to these 862 heads. Um, the, the big valve heads actually did very well. Um, so I'm going to go over the results of all of that stuff. But when I flow, haven't done this a number of times, when I flow a 799 head or a 317 head or a 243 head, they're always flowing more in the mid to high 240s, maybe 250 range. Um, and let's see, we flowed that one on a four inch. The one I floated, we floated, floated on a four inch bore fixture. And then the exhaust was around 200, 197 on the, on the 317. And I was trying to dig up the, 
I think I have the, um, somewhere. I know that I do in my stack of papers here. I just need to dig it out. I have the flow numbers for all of the heads and, and, and I can look that up and see, but they weren't anywhere near what this head flowed. And we had, I, I looked at the head and couldn't see anything obvious about it. Like I said, there was no pouring. Um, the valve was standard. We measured the valves. The valves were standard size. The radius entry was the same as we used on everything else. The only thing that was weird was the big bore fixture. But again, I've never flowed 243 heads and changed the bore fixture size to see if that did it. But we also ran the smaller head on the on the bore fixture size, and it flowed um, about what I would expect the the stock um, 862 head to flow. I mean, it kind of matched what I was doing which was in the, uh, you know, low 240 range. So let me know, <laughs> let me know what you guys think. Uh, that's, that's another example of why we dyno test these things and, and why when we do these projects, they don't always, it's not just, okay, we think that this is going to happen and then we go through the motions and then that happens. That doesn't always happen. <laughs> Sometimes things like this happen and then we have to scratch our head and go back and figure out what the heck was the real deal? Because for me, I don't, I don't, I honestly don't care. I don't sell heads and I don't pour heads and I don't do anything. So this doesn't make any difference to me which one flows more. I just want the data. So it got me thinking like, what is the data? Is the data from all the testing that I did before, is that accurate? Or is the testing or is the data that we did just recently, is that accurate? Are they both accurate? Is <laughs> neither one of them accurate? Should I just not do this anymore and and maybe get a job like cooking French fries or something? So that that uh, that's all the stuff that goes through your mind. So let's see what you guys are doing. Uh, Eight twenty three heads are square port heads. That's an LS three head or an LS three style head. Both the uh, the two forty three and the seven hundred six heads, the ones that I tested, were better than the three seventeen heads. That's a big change in compression. That's a one, that's a full point or so compared to a when you compare a seven hundred six to a three seventeen. And not only did I do that, we did that NA and we did it turbocharged and run at the same boost level. We saw the same thing. There was still a fairly sizable difference in power. I bought two sets of eight sixty three aftermarket heads with two hundred five one five seven valves. Have not installed them. Wait a minute. Uh, John, are you talking about an 862 head or an 823 head? I'm sure that that's a typo there. I just don't know which one it is. It would be odd for an 823 head to have a 205157 valve package because normally they're 2165, so they'd be a lot bigger. Yeah, Raymond, that's the kind of numbers I'm talking about. I, th this is looking like it's 20 better, and I, I just don't think that that's there from the bore fixture size, but I want to test it and make sure. I need to buy one of the sloppy stage tube cams off of eBay for 120 and see if they're any good. I didn't, I didn't buy the 100, Admiral, I didn't buy the $120 one. The one that I got was from, I think it was from TrickFlow. It was their version of it. Um, and I think we've run the Elgin one too, but the Elgin one's not nearly that uh, inexpensive though. Get your hands on the Procharger i1. I talked to them about running that that Procharger, but um, the control unit on it is fairly expensive though. Best combo for a 5.3 is a sloppy stage 2 and a 78.75. <laughs> I'm sure Matt would agree with you. We used to use offset alignment sleeves on big block heads on 4.250 blocks. What's an offset alignment sleeve? Uh, TCH Inc. That is the gentleman that supplied the big valve heads. And I can tell you that your big valve head with the two inch valve flowed 253 
and the exhaust flowed 189.9, so one, one, 190 CFM. And, and the stock uh, as cast 862 flowed 244, but the 243 flowed 273, which I don't, thanks Rex, what's going on, which I don't understand. I, this is, it's, this is an odd thing. I, something's going on that I don't understand. I, I want to try to figure it out. Caleb says to test a 302, 305, 307 small block Chevy built with identical minus the bore and stroke to see if there's any power difference. Well, those are different displacements, though, so there's going to be some difference there. And that's not going to be just a change in bore and stroke. So EK Racing is saying that the flow bench reads high for all of them. The other thing that we saw is that we didn't see a big gain in flow from the modifications that we made, and we didn't see big gains in power from the modifications either, which I thought was very odd. Yeah, Bill, I do have a lot of fun when I go out and see the guys from BTR. They're, they're good people. The 241 head actually did okay. It did better than the 317 head. Alex, do you have data on it to, to show what it flows before and after? If you had pistons to make the compression between 317 and 243 head the same, any idea how they compare? Yeah, according to Brian, they took 317s and milled them so that they were the chamber size was equal to a 243, and the 243 still makes more power because a 317 head, uh, a 317 chamber is not just bigger, it's different, and it doesn't make the same power that the chamber shape does on a 243. It's not as efficient of a chamber. What's the best stock head on an LQ9? Well, like I said, if you take a look at the video I have up, you can pick between a 706 and a, um, and a 799, and the 799 makes more power but loses low speed, so you get to choose which one of those things you like. How much do crazy high level as cast L says the like the fastest cast stuff works pretty good. Uh, Nate, you put an 80,000 gasket in it. N normally you would go um, the other way. A stock one would be 53. And then a lot of times goes guys go down to 41 to raise the compression. Mike, you're a little bit late, but I was late too, so it's all good. Uh, Jeremy, yeah, and in the head, any test on 317 versus 243, yes, in the in the head test that I'm talking about, that I have the video up on, we tested 706, 317, 241, and 799, which is the same as a 243. So we tested all of them, and we tried more timing, and the 317 did want another degree or, or two of timing for it to make peak power, but it's still down compared to the others because it has lower compression and, and a chamber that's apparently not as good. I have a TSB stage three with a socket 62 with push rods and springs on my four eight and it does okay. Uh, car guy, you take a look at the head test and pick which one you like, but probably a 243 or a 799. 
Uh, 421 for your compression ratio for a turbo six liter, any, anywhere in the nine to 10 range is fine. I need to look up the flow data on the 706. I, I thought it was in, I thought it was like 239, but when we float it, but I can't swear to that. I need to look the data up. Uh, Admiral, depends on what LS head you're talking about. Um, Yeah, your um, TCH, your the big valve head did good. It did as I think it did as well as the head that we modified the chamber on. Brian, a ported LS3, although I haven't tested one, but a stock LS3 is as good as a fast on a on a rec port head but the a ported one should be even better. The small tubing that aligns the head to the dead. Oh, sorry, you're talking about the dowel, the head dowels? eBay has a company that claims 310 ported. You, you can get those numbers from a ported LS head, from a ported stock LS head without any problem. Uh, Keith, I've never tested a, a Texas Speed low lift cam. John, what's up? Thank you very much. See, John knows how to step up. He's got game. Two forty eight, two forty nine. Okay, Dan. Yeah, I was looking at the flow on the, oh, this is a 317 I was looking at. Yeah, slow poke, you can make a 243 go go a good bit over 300. Some of the stuff is more like 325 or 330. There's lots of guys that have good programs for those. It's a good head to start out with, and, and it has a lot of potential when you go up in valve size and stuff. Joseph wants to see a test of a 6.0 board to 6.2 on the, with a Gen 3 with cathedral port heads. So what cathedral port head do you have on there? John's here in the house. Uh, Keith, you can mill those. You can mill the 243s. You can mill them 30,000s. <laughs> Muscle truck. That, that combination will work good. An LSA blower is going to make everything work well. Yeah, Jay, I've, <laughs> I've, I've done a few articles. <laughs> I'm the only one foolish enough to do that kind of work. Well, Jake, that's what we were talking about. Uh, on the first test that I ran, the 706 and 862 would be better, but now the set of 243s that we just ran were better, so I, I don't know which way to go. I know, John, what's up with that? 200. We got 300 people watching and 85 likes now, so that's that's not a good ratio. We're still like in the one third. I, you know, I'm I'm sorry to take it personally. I do want to. I do want to run the 292 with the turbo again. Everything needs a turbo. Uh, Larry, I don't know if I've seen those. I, I saw a set of um, 
243s and some other, uh, like a, a an LS3 style head, either an 821 or an 823 that the guys from um, Engine Quest, I think, supplied. So may, maybe those are the China versions of them. They, the guys at West Tech ran a test with um, John Hunkins, but they didn't compare them to any of the stock heads. So I don't know how well they worked. Alex, I've got a set of KTEC uh, 862s. Uh, I damaged one of them and we're going to fix that, but the, they seem to work pretty well. 862s are not worthless in my opinion. Uh, Trev Dog, I'm looking forward to the 4200 test. That should be coming up pretty soon too. Travis, just tell me how much power you want to make. We'll tell you which head you need to use. Uh, hand ported 243 heads work good. Pull them. Polo Marco, I guess. Do heads even matter under boost? Yes. Does hand porting the head make much of a difference? Yeah, if the right guy's hand porting it, it can make a lot of difference. Uh, MSR engineering, if you're getting a lot of noise from it, uh, something's going on with the design. So we don't see that kind of noise from the fast stuff that we run. I think the mic is saying, I think the cam matters more than the heads. The f it depends on the order that you're doing it in. And on a turbo motor, because you can make so much power with the stock heads, you don't need that. The head will still make power if you... If you upgrade the head and it and it proves the power NA, it will improve the power under boost. But the thing is, as we always talk about, if you have a thousand horsepower turbo, upgrading the head doesn't make any difference because you can get to a thousand horsepower. You can max the turbo out with the stock head. So, uh, you know, buying a set of trickle heads, which work better and make more power, they won't make any more power because something else is limiting your power if you only have a thousand horsepower turbo. If you have two of those and you're trying to max that out, then having ported heads can really come into play. Uh, Trev, you the 10 to 1 is fine on pump gas because lots of factory stuff has higher compression than that. Travis, just put, if it's a 6.0 and with a cam in it, just put a 243 or 799 on it. Mike wants to keep his 20 mile per gallon. Then you then do a 4.8 with a turbo on it and a stock cam. Uh, Admiral, I don't know what the, I have no idea what the GT500 and, um, Coyote heads flow stock. I'd have to go look. The only ones we've ever had flow, the only ones we've ever flowed were, I have a set of stock uh, Gen 1 Coyote heads. But I think once we ported them, even after we ported them, I think that they were only in the 330 range after they were ported. Um, maybe the newer stuff flows more. So a ported set of um, LS heads will flow more than those Coyotes do. But I don't think that they're going to have the um, average flow numbers that a Coyote does because the low lift in, in a four valve is going to be the low and mid lift, especially as it should be really good on the four valve head. What is the 706 maximum horsepower before you start restricting? You, you can't look at it like that. It depends on it depends on what is it an NA combination? Is it a big motor? Is it a small motor? Is it a higher PM? Is it boosted? You know. With stockheads, guys are making way into the four-digit power range on turbo stuff. 
Uh, Woody's Nova, I don't have that handy, but if you look up, if you do a search for the hot rod test that I did or for the video is up also, if you want to look at the video, that's other. I just would have to dig through all my paperwork to find it. The 799 and the 317 had flowed very similar. I think that they were within six or seven CFM of each other. Alex, thank you very much. Uh, Travis, you can make power with either one of those. It's not one's not better than the other. Uh, you can. We've done you know way past nine hundred horsepower with oval port stuff, just because the the world is no longer oval port and rec port the way that people thought about it back in the sixties and seventies. We went with rec port stuff because that was always thought to be the performance one because that's what Chevrolet did, but anymore most guys are running roval ports which is a just a big oval port so they've blurred the lines you can make a million horsepower with oval stuff the little oval port heads like no one wants to run a tiny oval port head until you run a set of airflow research 265 cc oval port heads and then you make six or seven or eight hundred horsepower with them then you'll go oh yeah well maybe that actually does work so you can make lots of lots of power with both of them Uh, 243 is the same as a 799. There are some 243s that have different valves in them, but that would be LS6 stuff. Uh, Andrew, that sounds like a terrible combination. A six liter board, 40 over. 40 over is not bad on a six liter. We, we go 30 a lot, but a 4125 stroke is not a good idea. And yeah, and if you have a six liter, Travis, I think that that's what you'd asked about. The, the heads that are gonna make the most power a stock head that's going to make the most power is going to be a um, a, a set of factory rec port heads, either an 823 or uh, what is the other? Now, I, now, now I've lost the <laughs> I've lost my train of thought here. Either an LY6 or an LS3 head. So either one of those is going to make the most power of any of the factory heads. It's going to make more than a 243 or 799 or 317. Any of the get these report heads. Um, and part of that, I think, is because you get to put the factory LS3 intake or the LY6 intake manifold on there, and that works really good. Do you have any experience with the BTRS H4 truck cam? Only the dyno testing that I've done. What heads does my 2011 48 have? You got to look on it. Just look on the thing. It says right on it. On some of those 4.8s, on the later ones, if it's a Gen 4, some of those had 7.99s on them. 8.62s are good for a turbo. You can make a million horsepower with them. Uh, First Amendment, you're, I don't know about a budget method, but if you can go to a wrecking yard and start out with an LQ9 that has a flat top piston or an L3353 is another way, it'd be better to do it with a six liter because then the compression would be higher. You could take that and then combine it with a 706 head or an 862 head that you port yourself and you really know what you're doing and put that combination together with a good cam and then you would have high compression. You're not I don't you're not going to be in the 12 to 13 to 1. You'd have to put a piston in it to do that. I don't think you could mill it enough to get down there. Uh, the other way that you could do that is you, if it, but it's it's not gonna, n none of them are going to be a low buck method. You could do um, if you found some used LS3 rods and pistons 
you could put those in and bore the six liter block to a six two, that's gonna help with power and compression, but I don't think you're gonna get anywhere near 12 or 13 to one without, without putting a piston in it. Custom, cam custom builds, LQ9, 317 heads, twin 3582s, any head upgrade that keeps 10 to one compression. I You, you don't need a head upgrade. Um, if you have twin uh, GT3582s, that's a thousand horsepower combination and you can make that with your 317 head without any problem. Just put a decent cam in it. Uh, William, you have a you have a stock bottom end with ported 706 heads, and you have a 236, 246 cam with a 110 LSA, and it fits the stock piston to valve clearance. That that seems really really tight to me. Uh, Boogeyman, um, go go on to Wallace. Go go do a Google search for Wallace Racing Compression Calculator, and then put in that information, and it will be able to tell you. I don't know off the top of my head what that's going to be. Mike, you can get way more than 20 horsepower from cylinder heads. Take a look at the cylinder head tests, um, especially on the cathedral port stuff. You can get a lot of power from a, a head. But again, like we were talking about, if you're running a turbo motor and you are trying to make a thousand horsepower and you have a thousand horsepower turbo, don't do the heads. You don't just keep the head that you have. Whatever you have will work just fine. Uh, Nicholas, a ported and polished 62 head will flow with a two inch valve will flow way more than a 243, except this magic set of 243s that we somehow came across. Uh, 421, you can re-sleeve that block and make a lot of power with the sleeve with the dart and stuff. I don't, I don't know what level half inch head studs are at. We've done 1500 with the um, CA625 stuff that's 7 16 uh, Michael, you don't need to upgrade the heads on a six liter to make 650 wheel power. You can do that with a stock one from a wrecking yard with the stock cam and all of that. You don't have to do any of that to make that power level. If that, if that was 1600, then we would talk about something, but just put any any six liter or any five three or any four eight, <laughs> and six hundred fifty wheel horse power is really easy. Uh oh, slop, Matt's over doing a sloppy live feed. You guys need to go over and like heckle them. Jeremy's making 700 wheel horsepower, 317s on LS 691 and meth. Well, that that's your limitation is you're trying to do it on pump gas. And if you put E85 in it and put timing in it and put boost in it, your whatever your turbo will do, you can do that. Uh I'm, I'm thinking that that's Chris Allen, 799 heads, a Gen 3 LR4, that's a 4.8, an HX60. I, I'm not real super familiar with that turbo, but yeah, I wouldn't see any reason. that The head and the combination, as long as you have a decent cam in there, will go to 1,000 without any problem. Uh, Evan wants to know, how well would a cathedral intake work on an LS3 head with adapters? It's terrible. I've, I've tried that. That's, that's up in the head... In the, in the intake test, I ran, we ran an, I think an LS2 intake on an LS3 head using adapters from the, um, who is it, the ICT guys or somebody. And then we also did it the other way. We ran the LS3 intake on a cathedral port head using adapters and neither one of them worked very well. It's much better to have the right head with the right intake manifold. Uh, 
uh, Kingston, I have two 43s in my Saab 5.3. Would they be high compression on a 6.0? So the, they'll be higher than if you have a 317 head on there and you put two 43s on there, it's going to raise the compression, if that's what your question Uh, Trev, if you take a look at a stock LS3, it's 10.8, 10.7 or 10.8 to one compression, just stock. So you, you can get away with that. It's just that you have to have the tune correct. So you have ported 241s, Tony from Australia, flowing 287. That's good. See, that should make decent power. Professional, amateur, everything. Are Delphi lifters okay to drive on? Yeah, we've run them a lot. Uh, Travis, 600 horsepower from a 454 is going to take a... a quite a bit of camshaft and and really it, it needs a fairly good head. So maybe if you're looking at more of a budget thing, look at the skip white stuff or the pro max stuff. And then it's going to be a single plane intake like a team G or a 454 R. And it's going to need um, a camshaft. That's probably going to be like a 242, 248 at 50. And it's going to be 650 or more lift. Um, and it would really help things if you made the camshaft at 272, 280, <laughs> then you would definitely get there. But the, well, and you might not, I'm trying to think what, the camshaft we normally put in stuff is a solid roller and it's a 255, 262. That's that blower cam that we run and everything. But we've made 550 or more with like a 242, 248 or a 248, 250 kind of thing, or 254. Driving with Drew, yeah, that's a good combination. Anytime you add 16 miles an hour, that's good. Uh, Hal, do aftermarket LS heads with a small chamber flow better than a larger chamber head? I, you'd have to look at the two heads that you're talking about. It's not a chamber thing. The, the chamber comes into play when you're putting like a 706 head on a six inch or on a six liter when it has a four inch bore. Then you want to unshroud the valve. If you put a bigger valve in like a two inch valve, it's a good idea to unshroud the valve because you, you pick up a lot of flow. I mean, we picked up, uh, I don't know, 13 or 14 CFM by unshrouding the valve. And that's just on a stock uh, valve size 862 head. So it, it does work well. Nineteen seventy nine suburban with a three fifty gets ten miles a gallon, and a two thousand three with a six liter gets twelve miles a gallon. Yeah, I don't know, but <laughs> I've never tested those. My truck gets twenty, so it's um, and it's a five three, and it's a four wheel drive, but it gets it gets twenty on the freeway. John, take a look at the videos that I have up on the different power levels, 400, 500, 600 horsepower. There's a bunch of different applications. There's a bunch of different kinds of test motors that you could look at to make that. Uh, an autocross thing is no different than a, a road race or a drag race thing. Well, some of the drag race stuff is kind of peaky, but it, it would be the same for a road race deal. And luckily, if you run the right intake manifold, you put a 5.3 together with a Trailblazer SS or a FAST, a set of decently ported heads, a camshaft that's to between 224 and 228 degrees uh, duration at 50. Um, it will work really well on the autocross. Uh, Michael, a 243 head can make, it depends on what you put it on, but, but if they flow 250, let's say that's the rule of thumb is they can support 500 horsepower. They can support more if you have a really crazy motor underneath that and you're really drawing on those. 
but 500 is a reasonable number. Most motors will make less than that. Um, some will make more than that. I think we've done, we've done over 500 with a six liter with 243 heads in the right camshaft. So that's a, that should give you an idea. CNC versus hand porting, they both work. The CNC seems to be more repeatable. Actually, the non-repeatable part of that typically is the head casting. There's just core shift and stuff. Muscle trucks. Yeah, I saw Freiburger's test. Um, and again, we it's the same thing that we always talk about. You stop thinking about it as the heads being restricting a restriction and start thinking about how much power do I want to make? If, if you're running a turbo motor or a blower motor, pick the turbo or the blower so it's capable of making that power. Now, the next important thing is the camshaft. Now, especially in an LS, now pick the camshaft. If you put the camshaft in it and put springs in it and you have the turbo that will do that, it will do that. As long as you have injectors that are big enough and it's intercooled and you run good gas and you have enough timing, it will do that. You don't need cylinder head to do that. If you're trying to make 1500 or 2000 horsepower, then you start needing cylinder head for it. Have you tested eBay T76 turbos? I've tested CX Racing T76 turbos, so that's probably the same thing. What's the most horsepower you can get from porting the heads? Well, if you go from 250 CFM to 330 CFM, which you can do with the right guy porting it and putting the valves in it and all that stuff, um, 330 CFM would support m maybe 700 horsepower. So a lot. Trevor, no, there's no head port that's specifically good for boost. They all work. You don't, just like with a throttle body, you don't need a giant port that flows a whole bunch, like we, like we just talked about, that flows a whole bunch to make a whole bunch of NA power so that you can make the turbo power if you're limiting it by the turbo size. A lot of guys want to run rec port heads more because you'll have better turbo response because they tend to make, if you take a factory uh, cathedral port head and compare it to a factory rec port head, the rec port head makes more peak power. The cathedral port head makes more low speed power. So it will spool the turbo up. So if you have a thousand horsepower turbo and you combine that with a cathedral port head, you'll have a thousand horsepower motor with better response than you will with the rec port head. Uh, currently building a 408 stroke or NA and your recommendation for LS3 style heads. There's lots of good ones. The airflow research stuff is good. Um, the mass stuff is good. The trick flow stuff is good. I've got a six liter LQ9. I want to know what heads are best. Daniel, take a look at the stuff that we did where I ran the, I, I, on a six liter LY6, I ran 706 heads, I ran 799 heads, I ran 240, or uh, 823 heads, and I ran TrickFlow 225 heads. So that will give you a pretty good rundown of what all those do. I'll give you a hint, it's the TrickFlow 225 heads. 1981 Camaro, yeah. Doing a 5.3, sloppy stage two, 8.62. For all 60, that's going to be your problem. Do you think a set of stock Gen 3 truck injectors will be okay? Uh, no. You probably need something bigger than that. Yeah, the 243s will work good on your 408 block. They're going to you know, ultimately they won't make as much power as a set of ported heads or aftermarket heads, but they'll work. And for a 408, I think I might pick um, the rec port heads. Tom wants to see a, an, an OG small block with 18 degree heads. I don't think I've ever run 18 degree heads on anything.
what is the typical airflow bottleneck? It, it's not like that. You shouldn't think about it like that. There's no bottleneck that stops like that. All of a sudden you improve that and all the magic happens. That's not the way that it works. Take your NA power output and you multiply it by boost and that gives you the boosted power output. If I run a board six liter at 11 to one compression, uh, Andrew, you can run a turbo motor at 11 to one. If you run 15 pounds, you're going to double the power output. So you have to know what the NA power output is and whether that 85 millimeter VSR turbo will run that level. And I'm assuming that that's going to be going into four digit territory. If you're going to run 11 to one, you have to have, um, the right octane fuel like E85 would be great. An intercooler is also a good idea. And obviously the tune has to be spot on. You have to have the right timing on it. The biggest intake and exhaust valve for a stock 453, you shouldn't be looking at big intake and exhaust valves for that. That's not where you should be looking. Um, you can put a two inch intake valve in it and, and I wouldn't worry about the exhaust valve. Uh, Hal, you need to get past the small versus large chamber thing. The 544 valve stuff that they did that Mahovitz and, and Kazi and those guys did for engine masters were pretty impressive. I think that they were 400 inch versions. Those things made a lot of power. Joseph, not very many people go to a 4065 bore on a 6, six liter um, only because the, the cylinders get thin. So make sure you check it. Make sure you have it sonic checked. Or you could just do it and hope for the best. I wouldn't run boost on it, though. What is the biggest NA cube that you've seen with 862s? I, I, I don't know what you mean. What, like, what is the biggest motor that 862s have ever been on? Um, ported versions of those, like I said, will flow 320 or so CFM. So they'll support a lot of power, even on a big motor. Uh, Zach, what's the most stroke you'd be comfortable with putting in an LQ4? We don't go more than four inch. If you go more than that, you're going to be pulling the um, pistons down out of the bottom of the sleeve and it gets unstable and stuff. And it's just not good. And you're going to get well, you probably, I don't know if you'll get, you'll have windage problems like they do in the big blocks. It already has a, um, you're gonna have to space down the, um, the uh, windage tray, but that's not usually an issue. Are hollow or solid valves better for boost? We use solid ones. <laughs> we need just a, a month of nothing but other guys. How much boost with no ring gap? You need to turn the boost up right up until it breaks. And then right before that is you need to go back. There's no way to know what that is because you don't know when you don't haven't checked the ring gap, you don't know what it is. Is your ring gap 13 like one of them that I checked? Is it 19? Is it 24? Is it is it already big enough? You just don't know. Uh, I don't know when I'm testing the RB25. I, I wish I did. I, I'm excited about it. I don't, I don't ever test converters or dump valves on, on the transmissions. Can I make a 5.7 LS1 board out to 6 liter? No, not without sleeves, not on that aluminum block. Eight, 806 heads, oh, LS1 perimeter. That, that, that perimeter bolt head is gonna probably gonna flow like a 241 does. Please enable the translation. I, I need to look and see how to do that. I, I don't know if I've ever done that. On a six liter LQ9 with a sloppy stage two cam going, it would be worth it to change the 706 or leave. Just leave the 317s in if you're going to, especially if you're going to run boost. A ported 241 head uh, gone nuts will flow more than a 243 or a 799 if they're done properly. 
The camshaft cannot increase the static compression of the motor, but it can increase the dynamic compression of the motor. And it can change whether the thing detonates and stuff. No, Cody, I don't know anybody that has a um, an old kit. I have two of their old kits, I think, in my storage, and I can't remember what they are. I think one's maybe a Hemi, and the other one might be a two-valve. Um, but I want to get rid of them, so if anybody's interested, I, I need to look and see what they are. Uh, 383 Mazda, if you're building a 5.3 for mileage, the stock cam or a torque cam would work good. And then I would stay with uh, the 862 heads if that's what's on there. Is it worth it to build a bare LS6? I think you're going to spend a lot of money doing that. It's, it's cheaper to get one from the wrecking yard if you can find them. The stock Trailblazer SS intake manifold will hold lots and lots of boost. I don't know what that limit is. We've we've run twenty more than twenty pounds in them. An LQ4 with a seven oh six sloppy stage two and a good tune is four hundred. I think you could get that. I think you could make that with an LQ4 as long as you have headers on it and a good intake manifold. Uh, Coleman, that's a good combination. And I, did you tell me what? Oh, a 91-104. Yeah, a 1,000 wheel horsepower is going to be easy with that. Uh, I was reading somebody about a, there it is, 350 with 882 heads. I've run that, a Summit K1102. I don't know what the 1102 cam is. Negative 4cc piston, nine and a half. Uh, it, I don't know what the cam is. And if you want to make torque, I hopefully you have a dual plane intake manifold on it and a carburetor. More moonshine testing. I, I would not recommend uh, Raul. I would would not recommend the LS7 cam. That's take a look at all of the cam tests that I did. I ran the stock cam, the LS7 cam. It makes decent top end power, but you're going to lose a lot in the middle. I'm still going to run the six liter with the North Star. Ring gap for a Turbo 5.3 is 28 to 30 thousandths. Uh, plastic, how should I build a timing map? I, I don't know on the micro square. I've never done that. What cam should I run on my stock bottom end? Uh, 4.8, ported and milled 862 heads and a ported truck intake. Well, how much power do you want to make and where do you want to make it? I t tend to put small cams in the 4.8 because it doesn't need a lot. But we've made um, almost 4.80 with... Oh, that was with the ported head, too. Um, that was a really good ported head. I think it was a TEA 706 head and a 224-232 cam. Yes, more blue jug. I haven't, Andrew, I haven't tested with manly undercut valves. Uh, Brian, you can port the heads if you want. It will make more power if you're going NA. If you're going to put boost to it, I wouldn't worry about it. Rob, is that a question? 18 PSI on a supercharger versus 14 PSI on a turbocharger on the same engine? Uh, I, it depends an awful lot on a lot of different things there. What what supercharger it is, um, where where you want to take that measurement at. Is it the, is it the horsepower peak? Do they both have good intercoolers? There's a, there's a lot going on there. 
a turbo will make more power at any given boost level than the supercharger will because it doesn't have the parasitic losses associated with driving the blower. Take a look, that video is up where I tested all the different blowers and, and the turbos. Uh, Jose, I, I run the same gap on the top and bottom rings. Hey, Dan, you got to get those dogs. You got to walk the dog. That's very important. <laughs> John, you have an LM7 board to 9093. That's pretty big. Running those Siamese boards. Uh, Samuel asking the wrong guy about um, factory ECU stuff. The AFR260 heads will make 600 wheel horsepower without any problem. I, I think those things probably flow 350. Uh, Chris, the a three rotor and a four rotor. I've seen two rotor and three rotor blowers i don't know about the four rotor stuff but it's it's a, the design it has different it has that many lobes on it basically uh pt88 t4 96 too big for a 57 it's not going to be real responsive but it depends on what kind of power you want to make demon tech what's up He's got God. Thanks. Thanks for your support, man. Got to get back to work. I, I hear you. I it's already been over an hour. I got to get going too. Uh, Ricky Bird, the 350 TBI, the best thing that you could do for it is take the throttle body injection off and put a carburetor on it. Put a dual plane or carburetor, and you'll pick up quite a bit of a power. Uh, Eugene, I have some big block cams available. Kyle wants a cam for a 427 LS 11 to 1 with Cathedral Port. What Cathedral Port heads do you have on it? Um, I think I would go big if you've got enough piston to valve and you're trying to make power. Josh, that's why we don't look at the cam bearings. You just put the new cam in. It's all good. Uh, we've made a thousand horsepower with a dual plane before, so it depends on what dual plane and what motor and whether you're adding boost to it. A forged and stroke LM7 on boost versus a stock born stroke LQ9 on boost. Oh, so you want to do like a 383 versus, or, or just a, just a stroke one with a stock bore? The, the turbo is going to dictate the NA power and then the <laughs> how much boost you run in and whatever the limit of the turbo is, is going to dictate what happens on the test. The bore and stroke is not going to change that. Uh, Linwood, how superior are LS engines to a small block Chevy? I feel GM could have made better flowing heads comparable to the LS engines for a small block and been okay. Well, they did. If you take a look at an LT1 or an LT4 head, those are actually pretty good flowing heads. They're not LS flowing heads. <laughs> Certainly not LS3 flowing heads, though. I don't think you can get, well, I say that. I, I've never seen any sort of factory style head for our small block that will, that will flow what uh, a rec port cathedral port or a rec port LS3 head flows. You're, you know, you're talking about over 300 CFM. That's a, that's an aftermarket race small block Chevy head from not too long ago. A motorcraft variable Venturi carburetor. I haven't seen those in a long time. I really, really like the idea. I, the execution, I didn't think. Um, uh, a hot mess. I don't have any Pro Max heads.
No 6.6 .6 test coming. I don't have one of those motors, but I'm going to try to talk Brian Tooley into getting one. Chris, we, I normally don't go more than a 430 on an LQ9. Some guys have gone for 4065 and, and put, you know, the, the 6.2 liter stuff in there, but I don't, I haven't ever done that. The 706 head on a six liter will give you a lot more torque for towing and it has more compression. So you got to make sure that you have the tune, right? Yeah, you can get an LT head to flow over 300 if you port it. I just mean it's, it doesn't do that from the factory. Yeah, lots of people have some good flowing small block Chevy heads. I don't think I have any big block heads. A 396. Uh, half baked, does the O2 sensor for your wide bound have to be a specific distance from your turbo to be accurate. I don't think it does. We've, we've about here, about here, about here seems to be fine. And then when we run stuff on the chassis dyno, we just put a sniffer in the tailpipe, which is all the way back from it. So I don't, I don't think that that's going to be a problem. Can you do a test with an LSA 6.2 liter? So you want to, you want a test of a cylinder head with a blower. Uh, I've done that, and it, it does add power. Uh, Princess Jamie, a quadrajet on an Edelbrock performer is, a good, is really good for a daily driver. You may have to work on it a little bit to get it exactly right, but once you do, it's they're awesome. Plus, you get to turn the air cleaner lid over, which is worth it right there. I know I'm going to have to talk to Matt and see what's up. I'm, I'm surprised that Uncle Tony is not live right now, too. Once he saw other people doing lots of live feeds, he stepped up his live feed game. What can I do to raise my RPM limit on a stock LS engine with lighter valves with titanium retainers help? Valve springs. Just put different valve springs in it. The 862 video will not be tomorrow. I, I don't have all the information yet. Have you ever tested the three-piece Dorman truck intake? I've tested the Dorman truck intake. I didn't realize it was three pieces, though. Uh, Robert, the first thing you should do is ditch the LS1 intake. The 243 heads are good. There's lots of different camshafts for it. Um, stage 2 NA cam from BTR or a 54, 454-11 cam from Comp Cams is good. Will make good power. Have you noticed the breaking point of a 5.3 block? Aluminum block versus an iron block under boost. No, I, I think it's it's north of fifteen hundred. So, is a wide band necessary for an NA big cam? Yes, um, to tune it, it is. A stock Vortec 350 with an AFR 195 is a stock 5360. I, I don't think it would be because I don't think it has enough camshaft. Uh, do you have any videos on a twin turbo 43 V6? No, I only did that single, that one single turbo. And I didn't even do that. That was actually my buddy Jason's. Driveway engineering claims 862 heads are better than 243. <laughs> I'm sure going by the testing that I did, although he does a lot of testing too. So uh, I'm sure he's run a bunch of them. And every time I've tested it, it's been better except for this time. Slowpoke, you're out. 
the heads on the 500 Caddy, the ones on mine are not ported. They're milled, though. <laughs> Always, every every live feed. Putting LS heads on a Windsor. No, you don't need to do that. There's lots of good Windsor heads. It's a lot of work. Gen 4 engine, maximum compression suggestion for 91 on the 85 or 85. The factory stuff for 91 runs 10 point, you know, almost 11 to 1, but it depends on your camshaft, depends on your dynamic compression, a lot of other things, your water temperature, all kinds of things. In E85, you can run as much static compression as you want. Paul, I'm going to have some used versions of those cams available before too long here. If Buddy John's out. I have a Cadillac TTSV stock engine, LSA, and a turbo cam kit. So do you have the blower and the turbo on it? If you do, that's cool. If you just have the turbo going to it, that's also cool. But the that bottom end will take a lot of power. You could make a thousand wheel horsepower with it. I, I saw the channel that has the LS on the three fifty one. Smear, if you're if you want to put that turbo on there with a 0.93 AR, that's pretty tight. But for 500 to 600 wheel horsepower, that would won't be a problem. Um, you might run into a little bit of an issue trying to do that. 500 is okay. 500 to 600 is a really big window. That's a hundred horsepower window. And on 93, what you're going to run into, into is if the back pressure is really high, you're going to run into detonation probably. Uh, I'm going to put the the Cadillac motor back together, and then hopefully somebody's just going to buy it because I'm not I'm not I don't think I'm doing any more testing with it. An LS6 with 799 heads. The LS6 already has a 243 head on it, so you don't need a 799 head. That's already that head. The favorite other guy's motor so far is the next one that I get to run. <laughs> I'm hoping it's the 4200 or the 3800. Yes, you can run 20 to 1 static with the 85. You just have to have the timing right, though. Uh, Rusty, I haven't run a bunch of VVT cams, but the, we ran some with the guys from Brian Tooley that work really well. I have a 301 Pontiac Turbo. You have the whole motor? That, those are awesome. H22, big cams, yeah. Uh, Trev, I've done lean cruise in my Civic VX now that Chad has it, but that would do 19 to 1 or so cruising. It was pretty cool. Uh, Brian, a 5.3 with 862 heads and a Summit cam cannot make 500 horsepower. A hot mess. I don't know what what year is the four three. Is it a um, balance shaft motor? Is it stock? What is it? Torque storm on a five three is good. It's a good seven hundred horsepower combination. Forty two hundred. I know forty two hundred is going to be awesome. Uh, Craig, I wouldn't recommend unshrouding those valves. Just put it on. That chamber is probably already pretty big. Uh, yeah, you can run 7,500 on your 5.3 and just 
put the heads on that you want to make power with, Jason. Uh, an ASCAST TrickFlow 220 head is a good, a, a good choice. Uh, Ed, take a look at the, and this will be my last question because I got to get going. Ed wants to know, can an LS3 intake support 650 horsepower on a 415 stroker? Take a look at the, um, the EFI LS3, I was trying to get through the different tests, <laughs> the EFI LS3 um, intake test that I have, the videos up, we tested exactly that and you can see exactly what that intake does on that combination at that power level and also see what it does versus lots of other intake manifolds that you might want to pick from to make more top end power, less bottom end, yada, yada, yada. So I got, I got one more question before I leave. Here's, here's the question I want you guys to all answer. Uh, which one is better? Red vines, like the red, red vines or black liquor. So red licorice or black, black liquors, like if you're going to a movie, which one do you guys pick? Let me know. Let me know in the comments so I can get going. You know, just random questions. It's just day-to-day -day stuff. I uh, And one more one more quick story. I, I was out today. I went out to look for snakes. And I was out in the tall grass and stuff. And there was a really cool a mother goose, actually, sitting there on her nest with an egg. And I scared her off a little bit because I didn't realize she was there because I was looking down under trying to lift rocks and stuff and saw her finally. She was kind of hiding. And then she took off and I got out of there so that she could come back and get back on her egg. But I actually saw Mother Goose today, which was which was awesome. I'm getting all the red black stuff. So got to see Mother Goose. Uh, I got my red black going. Let me know what you guys think. So anybody else that watches this video, make sure that you chime in on the whole on the whole red black licorice fiasco that's going on. Thanks for showing up, guys. I will see you tomorrow.